I'll start from something that you'll be able to relate to in your own peer groups. Assume for a moment that you're from the non-left and you have friends from the left. Will you cancel people merely because they are from the non-left? I think you'd still say friendship is different and ideology is different. You'd still be okay with that. But by and large on the left, what I've seen is if you don't subscribe to my circle or my viewpoint, you're out. Okay? Isi ko fatwa kehte Now, now, let's go deeper. Ye dialogue bazi nahi hai, let's go deeper. Marxism or leftism ka a common template hai, which is to say, if you're not with me, by definition, you're against me. That clearly shows, ye vichar dharon ki baat nahi hai, ye vaan se basic siddhantun ki aur mooliyon ki baat hai which effectively goes back to faith systems. So when someone says Marxism ka kisi bhi dharm ya not dharm, kisi religion se koi connection nahi hai, padho aur niklega. Which is why the template of the left and the Marxists is so so Abrahamic in nature. The otherization is inbuilt, it is central to the worldview. The definition of the self starts with the definition of the other, with the exclusion of the other. And that is an immutable creed of that particular faith system. It is a non-negotiable principle. Because if it is not there, then what will it be? Okay? So, as far as I am concerned, a civilization that believes in the concept of Samanvay, I am the dark skinned man from the south of India. Samanvan ka artha patado vai koi yaan se. What is the meaning of Samanvai? Samanvai to me largely translates to building consensus. Sabko jod ke aage li jana. I am not hinting at sabka saath sabka vishwas. I am not. Okay. I am saying Samanvai is central to our thinking pattern. Which is to say, if you decide that we have to coexist and we have to live by each other, you have to make a few compromises, I have to make a few compromises. So let us see how, what are those lines that we draw between our respective thought processes. Which is why it has been possible for so many sampradayas and so many Pants, regardless of their ethnicity, coming from either Central Asia or let's say all these places before the advent of Christianity and Islam, for them to come here in one way or the other, and even if they came as invaders, they would then assimilate and become part of this particular country. Think of Bharat as a vessel, which has the propensity, it's literally an Akshay Patra, which has the propensity to accept and blend and make you part of this whole. The only example so far, or at least perhaps the two striking examples, is that Jo Yampe Sharanarthyon ke Torpe Ayate, which is Yahudi and Parsi, wo Yampe Ghul mil gaye. Lekin Jo Apne Aapko, if you think of yourself as a conqueror, you will continue to behave like a conqueror. So if conquest is the goal, and it is passed from one generation to another, no wonder you are where you are today, we are where we are today. Whereas everybody else seems to just blend and live. Right? So Marxism is a secularized offshoot of a very clear process which has a very clear religious inspiration. No wonder it behaves this way. And therefore it constantly seeks war. It wants class war. It wants segregation. It wants to pit people against each other. So never be surprised when you find Marxists arraying themselves alongside others against the indigenous identity. It is the natural course of things. You should never be surprised. This is exactly how they have operated. I have dedicated a specific subsection of the book to this particular point as to why they are able to operate the same way. Marxism effectively says that they are anti-colonial. Read what Marx said. He clearly said, 
that the material basis of and the let's say the production of knowledge the asiatic system must be completely destroyed he said this of both bharat and china he said this over and over again and colonialism although i oppose it has this incidental beneficial let's say outcome which leads to destruction of the asiatic ways of looking asiatic ways of thinking so therefore i will support it that was his position you should simply so the entire point is you don't need to generate new arguments this book is necessarily a darpan ki tum ye ho that's what i want you guys to start doing in wherever you're talking about these issues arm yourself with facts you can perhaps have a disagreement with let's say logic with after a certain point of time but the 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 let's say the superstructure of logic will always crumble at the slightest hint of a pebble of a fact one fact is enough so therefore to answer your question don't be surprised and i say this bluntly marxism is fundamentally a cancer which has survived in this country unfortunately and it has destroyed enough lives it has destroyed enough civilizations but hopefully this civilization will respond even to this particular challenge after all steve was team went all over the place came here and lost right next so assume let's assume with the premise that i've understood your question right okay your basic point is they ask us to discard or give up a few things when i basically say give up coloniality i am also asking you to give up a few things and therefore there is a paradox in it right so let me try and answer that okay to basically say apne jano se jod ke raho and avoid the acts which is trying to sever the relationship between you and your roots is not the same thing so there is a false symmetry in your question is my humble opinion which is to say just because you're entitled to say let's say just because he says give up your identity and i am saying give up anything that requires you to give up the identity they are not the same how can they be the same you're focusing on the fact that both of these involve giving up something as opposed to asking what is the end game here or what is the end goal here you used a word identity right if you look at the book and if you read it i've consciously stuck a distinction between identity and consciousness i am basically saying identity is merely an external marker unless you're able to show unless you're able to show that what is being imposed on you whether with your consent or without your consent is better than what you were already following for a new idea to replace an old idea assuming that there is no force that is being used it has to prove itself on the ability to satisfy everything that the previous guy was doing plus something correct otherwise how can replacement happen there is no need for a substitute unless and until you are a better product right you show me how you are a better product removing all other external factors i have been either subjected to invasion or i have been subjected to colonization i have never been given the freedom to say take out both these and uh, variables from the equation and let me ask for myself if you are truly good for me that question now you have to start asking okay so i don't think that symmetry or the equivalence that you have drawn i don't think you did it consciously i'm just saying that there is an underlying false symmetry there i don't think that holds okay second whether it's it's the judiciary or even the academia i don't think any any of these institutions live in islands obviously there is a severe and a serious influence of pop culture okay but what is it that i think either the judiciary does through its training and what the academia does is that you try to look for sound patterns in the noise seeing what is going on under the surface pop culture for all practical purpose is showing the top soil you're trying to understand what is happening under the surface so obviously you can't become someone who is completely dissociated from this entire system and then analyze it because that will create a paradox in itself unless and until you live in it and you you let's say suffer it or you 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 feel its influence you will never be able to speak of it with conviction okay so i think this is a necessary evil in that particular sense i won't call it an evil it's a necessity academia the more and more it moves away from society and pop culture will come out with 
let's say, ridiculous propositions in terms of proposals. I'll give you a straightforward example from my own profession. Under the Advocates Act, people who are in the business of, let's say, who are in the realm of teaching law are not allowed to practice. In no other jurisdiction that happens. And law is fundamentally a vocational profession. That's why it's called practice, like doctors. The more you apply it, you're better at it. Proposals that typically come on, on let's say, policy-related issues from the academic fraternity, I'm not faulting them, I'm not saying anything. I'm saying if they had the benefit of practicing as well, their proposals would be much more implementable on the ground and in sync with what happens on the ground. Assume for a moment that you know jack about litigation at all and you've, you've just been an academic all your life who's been teaching law. You come and talk to me about litigation, the first thing I'm going to ask is, kabhi court mein kadam rakha hai ki nahi rakha hai? Agar nahi rakha hai, move. You know nothing about what happens in court. You have no idea how this particular procedure works. You don't know what is the life cycle of a particular case. You have, you're in no position to talk about these issues. Okay, that will be my very first response, right? So I believe that one of the fundamental things that we must perhaps try and do is to break these silos. The distinction that we try and create between academia and industry is largely a Western binary. Because, and in fact, it's not even a Western binary, it's a perceived Western binary because even the West does not believe in this. Every time a Western economy hits recession, the first thing that they do is to go to universities and ask them for ideas and solutions. Because there's an active industry interaction that goes on with the academia. That doesn't happen in Bharat as much, despite the focus on this. According to me, this particular paradigm needs to be applied not just in the realm of engineering or innovation. It must apply even to social sciences. A friend of mine uh, works in an NGO. And uh, Bharat is effectively the crucible for all these NGOs who are all in the business of social justice, samajik nyaya. Social work in this country is secularized missionary work, period. So what happens here is, they come here and what they do is that they have no idea how caste or jati works on the ground. They proceed on the basis of pop culture notions. Agar aap is jati se hai, then you will proceed on the basis that this is an oppressed and this is the oppressor, period. Ground mein kya hota hai, pata hi nahi. No idea. So here is an instance where they are the ones constantly asking for data, but when you ask them for data and empirical evidence to back up all their axiomatic propositions, they have nothing to back it up with. They only have books written by opinion makers, but not people have actually managed to collect first-hand data. This is the extent to which even social works, or so to speak, or let's say the social entrepreneurship uh, industry operates at this point. That is the danger. So that means if there is a fund allocation that has to happen with respect to a particular issue, they will start. This comes from the M community, the minority community, so paisa inhi ko do, kyunki ye yaan pe shoshit hai, peedit hai, trasit hai, sab kuch hai. That's the assumption. And in this, what they've done is that all your experience of your societies, you've projected it onto us. The way you treat African Americans, you've decided we treat our people here. So, Jati Pratha is equated with race. And then you start creating all these false parallels. So therefore, I consciously believe that there must be a certain degree of emphasis as part of these academic programs. Jao, field work, karo, publish, karo. let me see if you really have anything to show for your positions or not. If you don't have it, a publication that does not have first-hand data when it comes to these sensitive issues should not be allowed in any peer-reviewed journal in the first place. So I don't think, I don't think it helps to have this binary, which is, uh, and, and here's the interesting part. What I realized uh, as part of my own practice is that every time I have a discussion with someone from the academia, from the legal academia, there is a certain degree of hubris and there is a certain degree of pride in not being part of the litigation fraternity and then being able to comment on it. You take a lot of pride in not knowing the practicalities because you believe I am not touched by this dirt, which is practice. And therefore, my positions are relatively objective. Sorry, these are self-congratulatory labels that you have given to yourself. Right? So, I think these walls need to be broken. And I hope it starts in the humanities. It's a very serious problem in the humanities. Because in science, at the end of the day, it's very difficult to fool around as far as data or mathematics is concerned or even physics is concerned. But here, it's, it starts with a proposition. It ends with a proposition. There is no data in between. Next. Yes.
anyone? I don't want to ignore people sitting at the top. I'm sure there are quite a few hands raised there. If you don't mind, I'll come to you next. Rest assured. Let him ask. Yes, please go ahead. So, I believe that uh, <coughs> census as an activity from the standpoint of just number collection would be wrong because I'm fundamentally against the manner in which caste is defined today. I've taken the position very clearly in the book saying that in the last 75 years, there has been no attempt to move away from the administrative structures and definitions created by the British man as far as the Varnashrama Dharma in Bharat is concerned. And there are very clear records as to how they moved certain castes up and down as part of their census to not just create a divide, but also to create a sense of oppression and then reduce the resistance that was being given to the British man. So for instance, I'll give you a very clear example. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, you, you, you're welcome to uh, refuse to answer this question. Which part of the country are you from? Rajasthan. Okay. So, uh, have you heard of the Madurai Nayaks, the Nayaka kings of Madurai? So, these are people who were previously the generals of uh, Krishna Devaraya under the Vijayanagar Empire, who then went on to establish their own kingdoms. So, the, if you go to Madurai, one of the go-to places is the Nayak Mahal. Okay. So, the Madurai Nayaks and there were other communities called the polygars. Okay, these were specific communities who were created under the British. The polygars effectively come from certain martial communities of the south. Okay, so in Madurai, so if you go to Tamil Nadu, there are three Kshatriya communities largely. You have the Kaundars, Devars, and the Vanniyars. So the Vanniyars come from the Salem and the uh, let's say Salem region. The Kaundars come from the Kongu region, which is in E Road and Coimbatore and Tirupur. And if you go to the uh, the Devars, they come from the Madurai side. These people were so militant in their opposition, rightly so, against the British, is that the British establishment was limited to the forts that they established. The moment they went out, they'd be ch uh, chopped off, they'd be hacked to death. And they would also have the support of other communities in terms of indoctrinating them on a regular basis, ensuring that they have mineral material supply and everything. Around that period is when the caste census is undertaken slowly. They start the process. Madras Presidency is where caste was created. Read this fantastic book called The Caste of the Mind by Nicholas B. Dirks. And while this is a book that he's published, I think in 2002, his work on the subject dates back to 1992, at least from that. I've cited a significant amount of his work as part of my book. How they started doing that. And how missionaries, Christian missionaries, I've, his name is Francois Dubé or Abbe, uh, who was a Portuguese missionary operating in the Madras Presidency, his book on Jati Pratha was the state of census. So what they do, they then approximate everything and they realize Isse itni taklif ho rahi hai, isko niche kar dete hai varnashram dharma hai. And usse ye kehte hai, ye joh hai na, ye choti shikha penne wala, ye tumhe shoshit kar raha hai. They push that and they start creating the divide. It's there in their works. The governor general of Madras presidency purchases this particular book by paying the price for the copyright transfer. He gives that missionary enough money to last him for almost the rest of his life. So before you start with the caste uh, census, I would say start with the definitions. That's a long overdue process because the most weaponized form of identity in this country is neither gender nor religion, it is caste. Unfortunately so. And therefore, there needs to be a very serious conversation on this. And it can't start with rhetoric. It needs to start with knowledge. It needs to start with facts. It needs to start with data. Emotion gaya, tel lene. You start with that first. So, the attempt has been to say, itne sare subjects mein research ke liye scope hai aur uski need hai, why are you not doing it? Now, the state is not doing it because the state has a very clear political incentive to keep the caste arithmetic alive because it translates to electoral arithmetic. And you can't trust the state beyond a point. I am very, very careful about my trust levels on sensitive issues. When the voting opportunity comes, I know which way the vote goes. But my, my fundamental, let's say, uh, sense of reluctance or my circumspection with the state will always remain, simply because the state still thinks like a colonial state. Just then, Bharat ka jo rashtra hai aur jo rajya hai, भारतीय तरीके से अपने आप को सोचना शुरू करेगा तब मैं उस पे ज्यादा भरोसा करूंगा तब तक नहीं करूंगा नाउ 
on this what we have basically said is at least the society and universities must start talking about it but that entire domain is occupied by post colonial marxist and neruvian establishment which says jati varna kula caste sabko mila ke khichdi banao aur ye never extricate it never make it clear for people to uh, understand what is the difference between these words because it starts with language you wanted a caste census you did not ask for a varna census you didn't ask for a jati census there is a huge distinction in that book you will see proof of the fact that caste comes from casta which is the first portuguese word why portuguese word why portuguese word because they were the first colonizers of this country not the british men madras was primarily established by the portuguese at least the establishment that you know today the saint thomas basilica that's on saint mount road was previously the kapaleeshwara temple which had to be pulled and taken away to a different place because they destroyed it so you go to the kapaleeshwara temple in mylore on the outside you will see a board which clearly says Mandir, all its traditional Puranic descriptions show the temple as being closer to the coast. Usko wahan se push karna pada. Right? Anyways, the point is, since they had notions of casta in their communities and society, they imposed that here. Kisi bhi mudde ka solution ya hal jo hai, paribhasha se pehle nikalta hai. Language and paribhasha, semantics, that's where the game is. Because you see how it works on, the, uh, on campuses. नाम दे दो ठप्पा लगा दो बात खत्म ये संघी है इसका मुंह बंद करो ये सवर्ण है इसका मुंह बंद करो ये वो है मुंह बंद करो दैट इज द पावर ऑफ लैंग्वेज एनी बडी हु हैज कंट्रोल ओवर हिस्ट्री एंड लैंग्वेज हैज कंट्रोल ओवर डेस्टिनीस नेक्स्ट यस आई प्रॉमिस टू जेंटलमैन देयर सो वील स्टार्ट विद यस अच्छा ओके 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 लेट मी रिस्पॉन्ड टू दिस राइट सी आई थिंक ये क्वेश्चन उसको और थोड़ा प्रोवोकेटिव बना देते हैं विच इज सर आप तो यूपीएससी के लिए अपियर नहीं हो रहे आप नो नो एम टी सिंह आप तो वकील हैं तो आप भाषण देके निकल जाएंगे राइट right? उसके बाद जो हमें एंट्रेंस में देना नो ना आई एम नो आई गेट लेट मी जस्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन जस्ट ए सेकेंड so the question is it's a very practical question because um, a lot of people after reading the book are saying how do i with this conscious knowledge appear for the bloody interviews how do i respond because the first response will get me kicked out right i'll say think like a certain group of people wahan pe jo bolna hai bolo उनको जो सुनना है उनको सुनाओ राइट आई गेट दैट आई गेट दैट लेट मी आंसर ओके जस्ट होट लेट मी जस्ट आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन यू कैन डिसग्री विथ मी अलाउ मी टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन एंड यू कैन देन डिसग्री जी बोलिए राइट 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 आई एम आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन हैव द पेशेंस टू लिसन होल्ड ऑन टू दिस होल्ड ऑन टू दिस जस्ट होल्ड ऑन टू दिस लेट्स टेक दिस इन अ वेरी प्रैक्टिकल लेवल लेट मी आंसर दिस इन अ वेरी प्रैक्टिकल लेवल You've been seeing the videos of these coaching institutes that have come out, correct? You have seen all of this. आपको लगता है कि इन सात सालों में 2014 से इस मानसिकता में कोई परिवर्तन आया है? नहीं आया। Government के मानसिकता में परिवर्तन हो सकता है, लेकिन अभी तक bureaucracy में नहीं हुआ है। From the standpoint of even acceptance. एंट्रेंस से लेके कोचिंग से लेके ये मानसिकता बदली नहीं है करेक्ट ओके व्हाट इज द टेल यू व्हाट आर द रियलिटीज रियलिटीज आर योर पोजीशन डज नॉट हैव स्टेट सपोर्ट टुडे राइट एंड आई एम टॉकिंग टू दो स्टूडेंट्स बिकॉज आई एम आई रिफ्यूज टू बाय दिस प्रेमिस दैट एवरीबडी हु प्रिपेयर फॉर यूपीएससी नेसेसरली कम्स फ्रॉम खाता पीता फैमिली नो दट्स नॉट द केस I have seen children of farmers appearing for this out of a sense of service. I have seen people from a variety of backgrounds. Rajendra Nagar me, padey rehte hain saalon. 
Every year they do this. It would be mighty irresponsible on my part to tell them, I have written a book, go and put it on their mouths. Because what will happen is, my book will become popular. And I can think that I've initiated a revolution. In the process, what happens to certain lives? So if I can vouch for this, and there are photos of this on Twitter and other places, my suggestion to all these students, these idealistic students, I've written this as part of my signature. Enter the system, but do not let the system change you. Respect the fact that there are other members. I'm answering your question. Hold on. Okay. I leave it to the fair-mindedness of the audience to decide whether I should proceed or not. Okay, so let's let's have a show of hands here. Did I refuse to answer the question? Okay. Am I not trying to at least address the question very clearly in terms of what is practical? Yes. Okay. If you wish to use the book and cock a snook at the bureaucracy, more power to you. Please do it. Because I'll put you, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this way. Because effectively it will be chidbi meri, padbi meri. Because jo is, is book ko padke andar jayenge and use the exam only as an entrance and not pay attention to it beyond that, tab bhi meri hi jeet hogi. Aap jaise log jaake unke, unko bolenge ki aap galat hai, tab bhi meri jeet hogi. My point is very, very simple. You have to realize sometimes, think like a Shivaji, don't uh, necessarily stick your head out and have it beheaded. Because if he had to adopt what is known as the Banzai attack in, in, in Japan, when he's outnumbered, he wouldn't have been able to build an empire. His successes wouldn't exist. Think very, very clearly. Be realistic. Your ideals and goals need not change. But the strategy can change depending on the circumstances, period. Be very, very clear about this. I do not want indic-minded children to be kept out of the system under any circumstances merely because they have said something. Uska bhi vakt aega, uska bhi samay aega. Apna number aega. Until then, focus on the fact that no matter what happens around you, you have decided to serve this motherland and its, its, its thought process. You will never be deviated from this particular path. That focus must be laser sharp. If the one thing that I can confidently say that I've brought as part of my personality anywhere is laser sharp focus. I will never, nobody will be able to deviate me from what I want to do and what I've set out to do under any circumstances. So my suggestion to you is, so let's look at it this way. What do IIT aspirants do? You really think they, took the, they take the schooling system seriously? No, they just have to clear the exam, but their focus is on IIT coaching and getting into IIT. That's it. Have that sense of detachment as far as the syllabus of uh, IAS and the training is concerned. Detach. Ye ek exam hai jo clear karna hai, ye aapki vichar dhara ya phir aapke world view ko kisi bhi halak mein nahi badlega. As long as you go in with that, I think you're safe. I think you're 100% safe. Today you're not in a position to, so wait. Next. Yes. Uh, for one good reason, there is a clear hunger for a revolution. Right? So I'm happy that this exists. For me, the fact that there is a hunger for a revolution, to mujhe ye thopne ki zarurat nahi hai, ye andar se aara hai. Brilliant. Okay? Now, I will tell you what has happened in my limited experience over the last six years, ever since I started interacting. Pay attention, I'm answering your question, right? So I started talking on these subjects uh, from 2016 onwards. I've been vocal. It's not that I've been talking only then. I've been doing this since my law school days or even before. In certain institutions, jinko aap vampant ka gad maante hain, previously kya hota tha, ki jo bache unse they would not talk about it for the fear of being hounded out. Right? 370 ke time pe Right? Do you really believe that the institution that has just cancelled me 
it's a matter of just coincidence that there was an invitation extended from the students of that particular institution. You don't see that as a sign of change. Iske pehle, ye bahut kam hota tha. Institutions like there is a Mumbai-based institution which focuses on social work and social service, right? In those institutions, literally PhDs are written according to me, which are separatist material and successionist material, which is asking for tukde honge. That's it. Period. They're very clear about it. Ghuma bhira ke baat karte, lekin baat to hai. Okay. From those institutions, people have written saying we have initiated not just conversations, we are fighting on the ground whenever these topics come about. Please remember one thing. Aisa nahi hai ki iske pehle aapke paas tark nahi tha ya arguments nahi the. What is it that me or let's say people like me, what is it that we are trying to do? Or I or people like me are trying to do? Read ki haddi ko mazboot karna ki jahan bhi hai ladana sikho, baat karna sikho, apne paksh ko clearly rakhna sikho. That is the central contribution. Everything else is secondary. Okay. This is happening in national law schools. This is happening in institutions which are oriented towards gender studies and whatnot. You have to realize that this has come from a point where all the books written by Sita Ram Goel and Ram Swaroop were self-published or they had to create their own publication house. From there, you have traveled to a certain place where so-called Western publications are putting out my works and the works of Dr. Meenakshi Jain and others. Right? I'm not saying, therefore, let's be complacent. I'm saying recognize that a certain distance has already been traveled. Okay? And I'm not even uh, in favor of, let's say, incremental steps. I never said any of those things. My entire point was, ye jo diware hai college ke andar, isko bhedne ki koshish karni chahiye as much as possible because according to me, anybody who says he's the left or anybody who says the right, both of them are operating under the same thing. What have I always said? What is the replacement of the substitute for right wing? Exactly. I have never called myself right and whenever I did that, I immediately bit my tongue. Not doing it again, ever. So, language may change. Ho hai. People are willing to, at a time when you have the maximum possible distraction through social media, either through TikTok and whatnot, if somebody is willing to listen to a lecture either by Sandeep Balakrishna or a lecture by me or anybody else, that is a sign that there is a clear audience listening and consuming. That's a huge positive according to me. Not just that. Pehle to sirf resolutions nikla karte the whenever there was something that was called Sanghi. Now there are counter resolutions also. Student bodies are clearly fighting on this point. So I don't think these are merely incremental. But multiplier effect can create kar sakta hai. Let me come to that question. Individuals like me can only do what the squirrel did in the building of the Ram Setu. We are doing what we can. Multiplier effect hamesha create hota hai state se. Nehruvian Marxist dispensation, agar itne din ye kar paaya, because vahaan se piche se unke godfather ka haath tha unke sar pe, which effectively gave them the first mover advantage. Plus consistent investment for close to 70 years, or aaj bhi hai. No wonder they immediately rise up to the defense of that particular establishment. So each time, people can vouch for this in several places, I've basically criticized the current dispensation, saying, aapke taraf se ye investment kahaan hai? Curriculum, mein, humanities, mein, archaeology, mein, in all these issues. So I think that multiplier effect, your anger and your frustration is justified. Your criticism is justified. I'm merely saying, I'm going to go away. Because that criticism is to be directed to there. Because you see, the purpose of the state is not just formulation of policy. Policies are typically created by the society. The purpose of the state is to provide a fantastic megaphone for the dissemination of the policy and thought. The state is moving at an incremental pace, whereas the society is moving at the pace of a geometric progression. That is the difference. So one hopes that the state realizes that the society is ready for this radical change, that students like you exist. And therefore, when they come out with reforms in education, they will have your confidence and your support to defend those policies. National education policy जब बाहर आया था, इसके खिलाफ इतने सारे articles लिखे गए थे. Simple question: How many of you decided to write on the positives of the national education policy, on its language aspects, on its history aspects? 
बिकॉज यू हैव डिसाइडेड कि सरकार अपने आप को बचा लेगी 370 में भी यही हुआ था सीए में भी यही हुआ था वाई इज द मेजोरिटी इफेक्टिवली बिलीविंग दट साइलेंस इज इट गोल्डन ट्रेट यू यू शुड नॉट टेक प्राइड इन बींग साइलेंट मेजोरिटी बी ए वोकल मेजोरिटी only then you give them the confidence because you see you put yourself in the shoes of the politician his first question is going to be hum to vichar dhara aur iske naam pe kar lenge agli baar jab election hoga hum wapas aayenge ki nahi aayenge that is the first thing he is going to ask because a significant amount of investment has gone into this aur itna sab kuch karne ke baad if they move out of power jo satta mein nahi hai aur uske bawajood itna sab kuch kar sakte hain to destroy the fabric of this particular country agar wo wapas aa jayenge tab kya hoga so it is for you to give the confidence to people in power that we will criticize you where you are wrong but we will also vocally support you where we believe that you are doing something in the interest of this particular civilization that has to start you don't need to do this on a regular basis i am the last person who is ever going to ask you to effectively join what i would call a kavali mandali i won't use it bhajan mandali yeah now it's time to change the language okay so i am not going to support anything of that sort give credit where the where credit is due but when you need to tell them that boss we have chosen you because you are the only vikalp that this particular society and this particular civilization unfortunately has we wish we had more vikalp unfortunately that's not the case we have very few options but if you two don't deliver to kiske paas jaye these are questions for you to ask okay so on a regular basis you have no idea the number of times i've been trolled by this side for these questions What is this? What is this? ये तो आस्तीन का सांप है वहां से आया है यहां से आया है अरे आई एम आस्किंग फॉर एन ए पोलिटिकल अप्रोच टू सम ऑफ दीज इशूज बिकॉज सम ऑफ दीज इशूज इफ यू टाई दम एंटाली टू पॉलिटिक्स देन यू प्लेइंग ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी मैच वेन यू शुड बी प्लेइंग टेस्ट मैच यू शुड बी थिंकिंग ऑफ द नेक्स्ट फिफ्टी ईयर्स सिक्सटी ईयर्स सेवेंटी ईयर्स बिकॉज यू सिटिंग नेक्स्ट टू अलिजरेंट सिविलाइजेशन स्टेट कॉल चाइना डोंट फोकस ऑन पाकिस्तान बिकॉज इज एफेक्टिवली स्टूज ऑफ चाइना If you have to prepare for China, then the thinking has to be long term. Who's watched Godfather? Okay. So after the eldest son dies, there's a meeting where all the bosses meet, and on the way back, Vito Corleone tells his consigliere, "What does he say? This was not Tataglia all along. This was Bazzini. That's his position. It's not Pakistan all along. It's China." Is the occasion what? थिंकिंग so the best part of your question is that you represent that part of the society that is willing to take charge of this particular issue and therefore once an initiative becomes owned by the society rest assured it will go on because the state has an incentive which is political in nature the society has a deeper incentive which is cultural and civilizational so fantastic next how many more questions are we in a position to take it's 7:30 i won't run away don't worry just a second i'll just ask the organizers bhai aur kitne prashn hain जी जी ऊपर ऑल्सो ये आई वेलकम टू दैट जस्ट अ सेकंड क्या साइन करना है क्या <laughs> एक मिनट यार एक मिनट जस्ट अ सेकंड 8 पीएम क्वेश्चंस अंडर 8 पीएम यू हैव टेकन मी फॉर ग्रांटेड दैट्स ओके हां सो ओके वी विल कम टू दैट जेंटलमैन फर्स्ट एंड देन वी विल कम बैक राइट सो द गुड पार्ट ऑफ लेट्स से टेकिंग द इंडिक पोजीशन इज ऑन सर्टेन एस्पेक्ट्स सच एज एनवायरमेंट you may end up agreeing with the left okay there's a good reason for that their goals may be different which is they want to weaponize the tribal identity they want to create a certain divisive tendency there but if you end up giving space to the left on these critical issues they will occupy that particular space so my entire position has been take those issues and bring forth your position uh, i'll give you a very concrete example when the section 377 case on gay rights was going on before the supreme court churches were rep represented in the supreme court 
I live tweeted those uh, proceedings and I captured even their arguments. If you go and search for section 377 JSI debug and I think it was 2018, you will find those tweets. Churches and their ministries were effectively represented in court. Not a single Hindu institution before the court explaining what is the Hindu or the Dharmic position on the Trutriya Prakriti. No representation. No representation whatsoever. Bastar mein agar kuch ho jata hai, you leave it to Salva Judum or you leave it to other tribal organizations. Aapke organizations ko maa pe jana chahiye because you, they are part of the dharmic traditions. They are part of Sanatana Dharma. Aapke representation ko dekhna chahiye logon ko. So the entire objective has been, or at least my uh, exhortation has been, in muddhon se jitna aap bahar rahenge aur in se peechhe hatenge, they will be occupied by someone else. You must actively participate but the reason why you are not participating is because you are unsure of your own position. Is because your preparation is not complete. Because you haven't built the database or the repository to respond on these issues. The ability to respond or participate in a debate is a function of two variables. Ek to hai read ki haddi, which is you don't care about the audience and you have no stage fear, it's just one aspect. But the second aspect is serious knowledge, depth and preparation. These are aspects which I think, except for lone individuals who have been, who have existed all along, a mass may critical mass may create nahi hua hai. I'll give a straightforward suggestion to student organizations from the non-left. Not only should you be known for your ability to win elections, you should also be known for your intellectual prowess. So, nobody should be able to say that they can't hold their own in a particular debate. And you don't need to necessarily speak only in English to win a particular debate. Kanaya Kumar doesn't speak in English, does he? He doesn't. So, where's the problem? The question is of depth in a particular subject, not necessarily the language it is conveyed in. It's unfortunate that I'm good in English and not so proficient in other languages. I don't think it's a matter of pride at all, under any circumstances. I think it's a matter of shame, but it reflects the product of the, I mean, the, the education system that I'm a product of. What can I do? I wish I had been trained differently. So I'm trying my best to actually train myself differently. But if there are people who've come from the native education systems, please don't fall back at all. These debates are your debates. Ultimately, this is about you. So please talk about it. So one final question. I'm told that the usual culprits have done what was expected of them. So let's take one final question. Yes. Anyone, please choose. I hope it's a lady who closes this. Yes, please. Yes. I think we are at a very, very critical juncture. And ye, it's an Arya Par situation. If we don't support our positions, see, the, I made a comment during my opening remarks. Let me just build on that in about 30 seconds and I'll be done with that. See, the purpose of all these deliberations is not to become, I hate that term, YouTube influencer, okay, or a social media celebrity. It's useless. I don't see, I'm sorry, I, I, that tag disgusts me. I have nothing but contempt for it. At least I don't want to be associated with these terms. That's not what I'm hoping to do. I see myself as a practicing Hindu who's hopefully a good lawyer and who's trying to combine the best of both worlds. That's it. I have no other interest. I have zero interest in being any of these influences and all that. It makes no sense. It's not worth my time under any circumstances. So the goal is that you realize that there is a larger, larger game. Look at what's happening in Ukraine. Please look at what's happening in Ukraine. If India were less powerful and less guarded, its fate could have been the same as Ukraine. It's not just about campus politics. It's global in nature. And such fantastic demographic dividend that we have with brilliant minds and we hopefully for the next under 30, 40 years, we'll continue to produce people of this particular age group. We can't afford to lose this demographic dividend either in social media nonsense or on campus nonsense as opposed to serious ideation. We need thought leaders. We need people who can think about, uh, let's say, political science, strategic affairs, national security, demographic inversion, conversions, whatnot. We need serious scholarship. 
सो द गोल इज जो मोमेंटम है उसको और धक्का देके यू पुश इट इन दैट पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन एंड अलाउ मोर एंड मोर पीपल टू बिकम स्टेक होल्डर्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मूवमेंट गेम चल रहा है तो वहां पे बैठ के पॉपकॉर्न मत खाओ गेम में पार्टिसिपेट करो बिकम अ स्टेक होल्डर हैव अ स्किन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर गेम बट रिमेंबर वन थिंग दिस इज नॉट जस्ट अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ बींग एबल टू माउथ डायलॉग्स एंड रेटोरिक इट्स फंडामेंटली अ टेस्ट ऑफ Shastrarth, are you in a position to take on a certain argument? Are you in a position to argue on a particular subject without a book, without a reading note, what not? But remember, this equation is incomplete. I call it the SIP principle: be spiritually fit, be intellectually fit, and also be physically fit. All three are important. Nothing is in a silo, because when they know that they are on the verge of losing a debate, they resort to the streets. okay when they know that the primary gauntlet that they have thrown at you which is knowledge they are, that knowledge doesn't support them that history doesn't support them and logic doesn't support them out comes their true color which is fascism of the first order okay so therefore don't operate in silos you need all three variables in this in this entire crucible you need it don't underestimate the ability of a certain response if that's the language that they understand if that's what they keep saying so be it so focus start with seriousness and start with preparation and these years in college apart from all these serious topics my entire thing has also been that this shouldn't be a situation of these three years you shouldn't look back and say what a poisonous toxic atmosphere i was a part, a part of unfortunately that's what it is becoming you are supposed to go back with memories and hopefully when you have a reunion you look at the person as opposed to the ideology that he was he he was or is associated with but i don't think that's possible anymore boyfriends and mates and friends are chosen exclusively on the basis of political ideology unfortunate so unfortunate so i certainly believe that we are open to engagement and discussion negotiation and for a debate let the other side prove if it has the confidence for it that's it हाँ जी प्रतीक जी बोलिए माइक ले लो हर हर महादेव ठीक है एक कन्फेशन क्या के साथ शुरू करते हैं यू नो फॉर अ फैक्ट दैट आई हैव यूलोचाइज इम इन सम ऑफ माई वीडियोज करेक्ट आई हैव डन दिस ओके एंड आई हैव ऑल्सो टेकन द पोजिशन मच टू दी एंगर ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल अबाउट रिजर्वेशन ऑल्सो right i have said this at least in two places i'll own up to each of these statements i am not someone who's going to run away from what i have said people evolve that's a different issue but i'll explain everything okay three have i changed in my opinions because i can't criticize someone else unless and until i come clean on my own position in the first place okay so what is my position my position is and i think i said this on the times now debate that dr ambedkar is a mixed bag i said this very clearly ओके तो आप उनसे उन चीजों को चुनिए जो आपको लगता है कि आपकी विचारधारा से या फिर आपके एंड गोल से मेल खाता है एंड नेवर फॉरगेट द फैक्ट दैट ही डेंट कन्वर्ट आउट ऑफ हिंदुइज्म वो उसके बाहर नहीं गए ओके बट आई सर्टनली अग्री दैट वेन एवर हिज ओपिनियंस ऑन हिंदुइज्म आर टू बी कंज्यूम्ड कंज्यूम दैम नॉट विथ अ पिंच ऑफ सॉल्ट बट विथ अ माउंटेन ऑफ सॉल्ट एंड मैंने बुक में ये भी कहा है दैट आई विल नॉट डिनाई वॉट हैज हैपन एट अ सर्टन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम टू अर्टन कम्युनिटी आई सेट दिस वेरी क्लियरली दी आइडिया इज नॉट टू व्हाइट वॉश डी कलोनियलिटी के नाम पर आप किसी भी चीज को व्हाइट वॉश मत कीजिए डी कलोनियलिटी आपको फैक्ट्स को देखने की इट्स इट्स एक्सॉटिंग यू टू टेक लुक एट फैक्ट्स नॉट रन अवे फ्रॉम इट डोंट पिक्सिलेटेड यू हैव टू रियलाइज इसका बेसिक फंडा या प्रिंसिपल क्या है मिनिमम फाइव थाउजेंड ईयर हिस्ट्री है आपका मिनिमम ये एक साइन कर्व की तरह ऊपर नीचे जाता रहता है सो यूट मेड सम मिस्टेक्स 
And some of those mistakes may not be entirely attributable to you or your philosophy, but because of external consequences. Chahe wo parda system ho, ya child marriage ho, johar ho, ya whatever it is, you were effectively pushed. When you're constantly attacked for close to 1400 years, what it does to the collective psyche of a people, just think about it. Right? So, aapke jo systems hai, wo ossify ho chuke honge. Unka jo mobility of forward movement hoga, wo rug gaya hoga. All of these aspects are there. And therefore, there is a decent chance that Dr. Ambedkar was speaking from a significant degree of anger. Ho sakta hai. Okay. This, which is why I am saying, economics pe ho sakta hai ki aap unko thoda aur zyada padhiye. Law pe maybe to some extent. Okay. But jab itihas ya hindu dharm ki baat aati hai, understand it as perhaps the anger of a certain person, usko satya maan ke aap aage mat padhiye. Okay. Respect the sentiment but not necessarily the projection of facts from him. That is the limited position. That way, you respect the sentiment of people who are affected and you also reserve the right to say, but I disagree with you where you say, this has been the entire history of the civilization. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. Three, when I speak on reservations, people say, what is this? How can you use your own personal experience and say that because you have come from a low middle class family, you relate to what has happened to other people and therefore you say they should be entitled to reservations? No. Aap thoda long term sochye. Aap ke paas anti-conversion loss nahi hai. Hai? Nahi hai. Jab bhi aate hai, unko koi na koi uda deta hai. Right? I think only in uh, Madhya Pradesh there is an adhiniyam on uh, dharma parivartan and there is one in Odisha. And that too they were, by the way, they came about in the Congress regime in the 50s and 60s. Okay? Now, when this happens, when you don't have that, and her jagay se aapke logon ko convert kani ki koshish ho rahi hai, in one way or the other, either through force or whatever it is, ek hi joker hai aapke entire pack of cards mein, which is reservation at this point. Right? I would say the day when your institutions, your religious institutions have the freedom to use their money, to subsidize education of all these people who are affected, the need for a reservation perhaps may be obviated on its own. Because this state will never do this. Take this again. This state will never do this. No one will do this. Therefore, this should come from the response to society, wherein you are in a position to offer alternatives to reservation. Therefore, as opposed to state-based affirmative action, can you have a society-based affirmative action where the society takes responsibility for this? and says, mandiron ka jo paisa hai, jo resource hai, us mein se 15 ya 20 percent hum is ke liye yama karke rakh deenge. So, ved ko bhi padhaenge, gaushala bhi chalaenge, aur ye bhi karenge kisi bhi halat mein. And, you treat this particular door, or this slot, as a revolving door, which means, it's not necessary that the same community constantly benefits from this. If you think of, let's say, every society or every community moving in a certain direction, to aaj community X ho sakta hai, jo iska beneficiary ho. Kal ko yor ho sakta hai, but within the Hindu fold. Right? When you try and do that, you have solutions to offer. Now, what are we doing? We are taking a shot at this particular institution without offering a credible solution to the other real-time dangers that we have. That is where my entire position has come from. Okay? I am not against merit. I mean, after, I mean, how can I be against merit, particularly when I know for a fact that the scope for merit is only shrinking further and further, pure merit. Okay? And I completely understand the angst of students uh, who are aspiring for NEET or uh, let's say post-graduation medical institutions. I am not against you. I am not against any of you. I am merely taking a big picture position which is not limited only to you. So you may have a legitimate grievance against me for the positions that, that I have taken. But I am looking at the big picture. And I am hoping that if the society can give credible alternatives to reservation, then you can do away with it. But when this doesn't happen, Creamy layer, you can't get rid of the creamy layer. You can't get rid of the reservation. You're not even able to do this after a couple of generations of benefiting from this particular system. You have such a resistance. How is this going to happen? Because the state and parties have a very clear vested interest in talking about this on a regular basis and they will enter it. So the society has to talk. Who's going to talk about this? Right? So my entire evolution has been, I certainly believe that he has his merits, but he also has very serious problems in the manner in which he's taken pot shots at Hinduism, 100%. On those aspects, I don't agree with him at all. For that matter, I certainly don't agree with certain aspects of even Satyat Prakash completely. How can I? I 
बट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे बिकॉज दिस हैपन्स टू बी हिंदू धर्म हम फतवे तो जारी नहीं करेंगे हम क्या कहेंगे सॉरी भाई आई डिसग्री विथ यू आई डोंट फॉलो यू पीरियड सो आई हैव गिवन दिस एग्जांपल बिफोर थैंक्स फॉर पॉइंटिंग इट आउट आई हैव गिवन द एग्जांपल आई विल जस्ट आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन जस्ट आई विल जस्ट वन एग्जांपल आई विल गिवन एंड लीव इट एट दैट जब भी दलित डिस्कोर्स की बात होती है या फिर रिजर्वेशन की बात होती है इट स्टार्ट्स एंड एंड्स विद डॉक्टर अंबेडकर when in fact that entire movement had a lot of other representatives so i have even spoken of mc raja who was a dalit representative from trichirapalli which is trichy when he was given the offer to convert to christianity by the missionaries they approached him and others he says aapko kya lagta hai hum dharm parivartan ke liye lad rahe hain nahi main hindu hu aur hindu hi marunga but my point is mujhe bhi i want dignity i want to be treated with dignity and i am not going to ask for the annihilation of the of the of the faith system of my ancestors he says that very clearly so you start with diversification of the dalit discourse you present all of those aspects it's it was not a one man movement at all under any circumstances and considering the uh, the uh, diversity in this country the caste reality or the varna reality of a particular part of maharashtra cannot be the reality of the rest of the country everywhere it has changed i'll give a straight of example Uh, Rabindranath Tagore comes from the Brahmin community of Bengal, but he was a land-owning Brahmin. That could be equally set of, let's say, perhaps certain significant portions of Kerala uh, Nambudris. But Tamil Brahmins have not been land-owning. Telugu Brahmins have not been land-owning. Kannada Brahmins have not been land-owning. So the myth that land be in ke hath mein hai, dharm be in ke hath mein, all of these aspects, first of all, don't apply across the country. This is the diversity of this land. Ownership of land, ownership of resources. the power politics or let's say the hierarchy changes from place to place the decentralization and diversification of this discourse is extremely important when you do that then you will have greater arguments to present saying that jab itne sare tatya hain aur itne sare facts hain why are we fixating on one particular individual i am not saying ignore that individual i am certainly not going to say that but i am saying aur bhi log the aur hain aaj bhi that's it